Hello everyone, this is Mr. Wong. We're going to continue on for the third question in the 2024 AP Computer Science A FRQ section. In the last couple of videos, we already went over question one, and then we went over question two. Here's my work for question one. Here's one. We finished question two as well. And now we're going to move on to question three, the array array list question. So it looks like this year we have an array list to work with. Awesome. And we need to write two methods of the word checker class. So is word chain and create list. So in the is word chain method, we need to determine whether each element of word list except the first, all right, I'm gonna keep note of that, except the first, contains the previous element as a substring. The following shows two sample word chain calls. So we don't look at the first, we start here, and is the previous a substring of band? So is an a substring of band? Yep. Is band a substring of band? Yep. Is band a substring of abandon? Yep. Two is a substring of two. Two is a substring of stool, but this does not work. All right. So let's go ahead and give it a try, part A. So we're going to write public boolean is word chain. And we're going to be dealing with the array list called word list. So uh, I'm just going to write word list. So this seems like one of the FRQs we've done together as practice. My idea is we're just going to assume, let's assume that the array list does have um, this right here. Everything is correct. And then if we find an example where it's not correct, then we set some variable, some tracker to false, and we'll return that. So what do I mean? Well, I'm going to create a Boolean value, and I'm going to let this boolean value basically assume that we have a word list that meets the criteria so meets criteria and now i'm going to loop through the word list and i'm going to try to see if it doesn't meet the criteria so i'm going to loop through the word list now for this word list, I need to look at the current value, whatever I'm looking at, and the previous value. And I don't want to start at index zero, I want to start at index one. So I'm going to use a for loop. So for int i is one, i is less than word list. Uh, for array list, I think it's size and I plus plus. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the current word. String current word equals word list dot get whatever is that next I. And then I'm going to get the previous word. String previous word is word list dot get i minus one. This is also why we had to start at index one because there is no index negative one. And now I'm going to try to see if the previous word is inside of the current word. Now, I think one mistake people might make when doing this, and I definitely had this thought, is using substring because it has the word substring right here. But really, what we've learned in APCSA is if you want to see if a string is in a, another string, you want to use index of. So we're going to use index of. If current word dot index of previous word. So this is saying if the previous word is inside of current word. Um, 
contains the previous element anywhere, looks like, from the examples. So if that is not equal to negative 1, because we know, if we know the index of method, that it will return a negative 1 if previous word is not inside of current word. So if it's not equal to negative 1, then um, we know it meets the criteria. But wait, I want to see when it isn't meeting criteria. Because remember, my assumption is up here. I'm assuming that we do meet the criteria. And what I want my for loop to do is check if I don't meet the criteria. So if previous word is not inside of current word, and it'll return a negative 1 if previous word is not inside of negative uh, current word. Then I'm going to make meet meets criteria to false. Okay, that's my if condition. And then I think that's the end of my for loop because I just go on to the next word. And then I just return meets criteria. All right, I think that is part A. So what we're doing is we're assuming the array list does meet the criteria. And as soon as we find something that doesn't meet the criteria on, we just set it to false. And notice we never update it to meet the criteria again, because as soon as we find one example, it kind of poisons the whole array list. Uh, if you really want to check, you can go ahead and look at your code and look at the example and make sure the example works with your code. So you can pause here if you want, take a look at this. Think about my reasoning. Maybe I made a mistake, let me know. I'm gonna move on to part B. So in the part B, uh, we're gonna write a method called create list, which creates and returns an array list of strings. I need to remember how to do that. And it identifies strings in word lists that start with target. Okay, start with target. In the other example, it didn't matter where it was, but this one, it has to start with target. Um, so it looks like target. This is the target word cat. And cat is right there. This is not in size, so it doesn't get added. Cat is right here. It's right there. Right here, it's added. Cat is right there, so uh, blank string. Okay, um, let's go ahead and give it a try. So I know I need to create an array list, so I'm going to probably do that first. Let's go ahead and write the method. Okay, you never need to do it, but I always like to have it because it reminds me of my parameters and what I need to return. All right. So uh, I need to create an array list because I'm going to be constructing one. Array list string. <laughs> I always create my array lists and I give them bad names, but I t call them blah. You don't, definitely don't should not do that. But I'm just going to continue that for my students. They know me. I do that so they don't copy my code when I'm teaching them. So say what I do, don't do. Wait, do what I say, not what I do. And now I want to loop through this word list. And I want to make sure that I don't modify this word list right here. You can use a for loop for this. You can use a for each loop for this. I'm going to go ahead and use a for each loop. Uh, for each loop. Um, again, just to show you something different from part A. Not because you have to use it. So the way I write this is for each a uh, string that I'm going to call blarg. Uh, I'll just call it s. For each string that I'm going to call s that is inside of my array list called word list, inside of my data structure, I want to do something. What do I want to do? Well, I want to see if target is inside of my string s. So, uh, int index, I'm going to create a variable called index, and I'm going to see if uh, s dot index of target. 
So if target is inside of S, then index will be a value zero or greater. If target is not inside of S, it will be a negative one. But in my code, I only want things that start with target. I only want to add things that start with target. So I'm going to be checking if index is equal to zero. And if it is, then I want to add it to my new array list. So my if condition is going to be if index is zero, then I want to add it to my array list. Okay. So this is where I want to add to my array list. My array list is called blah. And I'm going to add the, the, um, the string s. Now, I don't want to add the entire string s. I want to add a substring of s. Now, that substring is going to be everything but the target word. So how do I do that? Well, remember, substring takes in one integer or two integers. If you pass in one integer, it starts at that index, whatever integer you pass in, and it goes all the way to the end. That's kind of what we want. So if we look at this example with the target word of cat, the length of this is three. And if we look at the example of catch, that's zero, one, two, three, which is exactly where I want to start. If I look at cat, cha, cat, zero, one, two, three, once again, it's exactly where I want to start. Uh, if I look at catch, this is length of five. If I look at uh, cat, cha, cat, uh, catch a cat. Once again, the length is exactly where I want to start at a cat. So I'm going to get the substring of the target dot length. Uh, how many parentheses? One, two, three. Okay. And that should get me the substring of S of exactly what I need. Uh, I think that's all I need for my if condition. I think I'm done with my for loop. And I need to remember to return my array list. All right, I think I'm done. Once again, if I really want to check, I would definitely make sure this code matched with the examples. But um, I think it's good. Let me know if this is correct. If not, feel free to let me know in the comments um, You know if it's wrong. Happy to learn. All right, on to the next one.